Hi friends, I am uh, Dr. Naufal from Conceptual Orthopedics. So today I will be discussing about an important topic which is known as Sinks Index. So osteoporosis is a major problem that every orthopedic surgeon has to face while treating fractures. So what is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis in simple terms is the reduction of bone mass. So when you consider any particular bone has a particular resistance to loads. So if you consider a femur, when the femur is loaded, the bone tries to resist so that a fracture doesn't occur. So that is known as a fracture resistance. So the amount of osteoporosis is indicated by the bone mineral density, which is also known as BMD. So you measure the BMD and if you see that the fracture resistance is directly proportional to the bone mineral density. So the amount of bone mass is important so that normal loads should not cause a fracture on your bone. So this is actually directly proportional to the cube of BMD. So the chances of a fracture happening is inversely proportional to the cube of BMD. So you can imagine that even if a point is reduced in your BMD, it is going to cause a fracture almost nine times because it's the cube of the BMD that is inversely proportional to the fracture chances. So now to understand this better, you should know the following terms. One is, what is a woven bone? What is a lamellar bone? What is the cortical bone? And what is the cancellous or the trabecular bone? So woven bone is the one in which the collagen, that is type 1 collagen, is arranged quite haphazardly. There is no particular layering that happens in the woven bone and that is an immature bone. So woven means immature bone. So where do you see this immature bone? It is usually seen in embryo or in a neonate or in a soft callus that is formed after fracture in children or in adults in the early stages of a hard callus formation. It is between the transition phase of the soft callus and the hard callus. In that particular point also you can find this particular immature bone. So that is why you have to be careful on allowing weight bearing for a conservatively managed fracture. So this particular phase has to be kept in your mind. So that is the woven bone. So I told you the arrangement of the collagen is quite irregular in this particular phase and hence they can't resist too much of stress. Now coming to the lamellar bone. Lamellar bone is nothing but a mature bone. So in this what happens is that these collagens are arranged much more in a parallel manner forming something known as lamellae. So these lamellae are arranged in the form of a herring's bone and making the bone quite strong. So you can remember lamellar equals to mature bone. So this you can remember as wilm. Uh, you would have heard the term wilm's tumor, right? So like that you can remember woven bone is immature and lamellar bone is mature. So now what is the difference between a cortical bone as well as a cancellous bone? So is in a cortical bone, almost 80% of the entire human skeleton has cortical bone. So here what happens is that there is a very nicely arranged system or canals which causes good resistance to fracture happening. So cortical bone has a central haversian canal surrounded by multiple lamellae. So if you consider these as the lamellae and the central uh, haversian system which is the blood supply and this entire thing is known as an osteon. So likewise there will be multiple osteons like this. So this is actually the cut section. If you take a femur and cut it through the center and look from top, this is how you see on the cortical side. Okay. Now, considering from outside to inside, 
like if this is the particular bone from outside to inside there will also be some more canals which is known as the Walkman's canal okay these Walkman's canals have blood vessels which connect each haversian canal so this makes a very strong structure like this so that the bone doesn't fracture now coming to the cancellous bone so in cancellous bone there is a small difference that is in the case of a cortical bone i said that these are parallel and will be almost perpendicular to the loads that are given to that particular bone whereas in the case of a cancellous bone the loading decides the type of trabecula present in that particular area so if you consider a prof proximal femur the loading the joint reaction forces causes the the lamellae or the trabeculae to be arranged in such a way that it can resist that particular load okay so that is the difference in case of a cancellous bone so cancellous bone or trabecular bone is actually the deeper part of the bone it is arranged as a lattice work instead of a straight parallel arrangement it is more like a lattice uh, arrangement of thin sheets okay so in between these thin sheets there is interspersing bone marrow as well or fat as well so this is mainly prominent in the axial skeleton and when we come to the appendicular skeleton on the terminal ends that is like a proximal femur or a distal radius or a proximal humerus these lamellar bone uh, is arranged in more of a trabecular arrangement and one more thing is that these particular set of bones don't have any haversian canal so remember that so how is it different from that of a cortical bone so the response to the loading is different from that of a cortical bone so when there is loading in a particular direction the bone tries to resist that particular loading which is known as the wolf's law so the lamella is arranged in a particular direction according to the resistance or the loading given over there so that is the response and when a weakening starts or if there is no loading that particular set of lamellae tend to vanish that is the difference between a trabecular bone and a cortical bone so here you can see that this is the cortical part and this is the entirely cancellous part so now i said that the bone or the trabecula are arranged in a different way in the case of a cancellous bone okay so there are totally five groups of uh, trabeculae in the proximal femur which is actually formed due to the different responses to the proximal femur and is the principal compressive group the principal tensile group the secondary compressive group the greater trochanteric group and the secondary tensile group so when you consider the joint reaction forces that happen over here like this the bone resist forming multiple trabeculae like this which starts from the head of the femur superiorly and go towards the most strongest part that is the calcar okay so this is the response to the joint reaction force now the next strongest trabeculae will be the principal tensile group which is shown like this okay so this is actually the resistant to the bending force at the neck of the femur so the bending force happens and this causes trabecular formation in the form of a tensile group and this is the one which is the second most strongest the next one which doesn't have much amount of loading is the secondary compressile force of the trabeculae so this part is the third strongest and then we have the greater trochanteric group which is formed due to the pull of the gluteae so for you the three important parts will be the principal compressive group the principal tensile group and the secondary compressive group